Emily Banji, Shamai, Juliet Dwee, Dean Artist Theatre, um, Ac and Gid Hulistis, Sid Bodden Gwithiar, Project Ama, Gida, Theatre Canal Zaitol, Yang Kid Kamri, A Solomonic Peacock Theatre, and Blantai in Malawi. And this has developed into a project where we are using three young people in Malawi and young people in Wales. So they have come up with a production. It's a, a poetry nature of performance, which will showcase at Easter Theatre Festival. In the Go Digital programme, British Council wanted to support connections between arts and cultural organisations in Wales and, and those from across the world, and especially in the days of the limited travel and face-to-face -face activity that was due to the pandemic, we really wanted Go Digital to enable participants to develop their new relationships, to develop new ways of working um, and new project ideas. So should we talk a little bit about like how you got to be a part of this and like how we ended up doing this whole project. I was called under Solomonic Peacock's Theatre to yeah. participate in the Go Digital project. And then that's how I joined because they told us that it's a project that, that wants to do with change towards the youth. That's why I decided to participate. Oh, cool. And how did you become a part of Solomonic Peacocks in the first place? I joined it while I was in secondary school through a club called Away and Fair. It worked hand in hand with Solomonic Peacock's Theatre. After I finished high school and then I came to join the, the theatre. Oh, yeah, for me, um, when I got the email about this, I just thought it'd be like such a cool opportunity because I've never worked with anyone like internationally in this way before. And especially being able to like create over Zoom is something so like unique. It yeah, it is unique. Yeah, and it has been like really cool to be able to get to do it. Once beautiful, but now demolished. Once warm, but now it's heated. Africa is so hot that one can fry an egg on the tarmac road. The first phase was like an R&D phase, getting to know each other and establishing like a safe space for the young people to be able to collaborate. We went on and developed a spoken word piece which came from the young people and a theme that came out of that was voice, how we use our voice, how some people might not be able to use their voice under different circumstances, but in particular their voices as young people, their languages, how they express themselves and what messages they want to put out into the world, what they're passionate about. I'll continue to shout about matters that are being locked away in a cage. Our generation may be tired, but we're hungry. And it kind of grew organically as we had these discussions and writing sessions. And also as we exchanged languages, that's been something really integral to the project as a whole. The dancers, yeah. the language. Yeah, <laughs> learning new things and watching you guys do that dance on one of the first Zooms was really, really fun. Um, Benny. Yeah, the Benny. We did dance. Benny the first time. Yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> like, I didn't even know that was, like, part of your tradition, so that was really cool. Yeah, we got to learn each other's traditions. Mm -hmm, straight away. <laughs> you know, you just wake up one Sunday morning and you don't know what you're going to learn from where else. And after the session, you just hear dosh. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah, it means thank you. It means zikomo. So it was a good experience. We're working with an amazing artist called Edith Morris. She's an artist and filmmaker based in Cardiff. So we had a couple of sessions with the young people where we did some mood boarding. We spoke about what we wanted visually and we've just had a workshop with Edie looking at how she's going to overlay the young people's handwriting on some film material which we've been collecting. But also outside of that, they've been continuing to build their relationships outside of the workshops themselves. And now that's developed into the young people sharing videos over WhatsApp and that's going to be used in the film as well. Yeah, I love it. The film that's being created by the young people, I think really reflects those shared interests, that shared 
interest around exploring common themes that the participants have explored together in the project and I really can't wait to see the finished film. I think it's going to be really lovely because you'll get to see the like relationships and connections that have been formed within the workshops but also externally. It's just really beautiful just being able to connect like that and create art on something like Zoom, <laughs> which otherwise is very corporate and boring. <laughs> How do you feel about the videos that we've been filming? Well, I felt like we're all the same. Do you, I mean, be that we have differences, but then like the one, especially the one that we had to film nature, you realize that we all have like the same things and then we got to learn about your nation or flower. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here, I've never seen a daffodil in real life. I only see them on oh, wow. TV and social media. <laughs> yeah. So through the workshops, we've created, I suppose, a new theatre company of young people, and they've decided to call it Walma Arts, Wales and Malawi. What do you remember about like the way that we came up with Walma Art? I think it was Ducky. She was suggesting that we merge the names, mm -hmm. and then we were, we were trying to figure out what we could merge. Would it be the country's name? And then Emmanuel just said, "How about Wilma?" With that last part, the um, the arts, we wanted to think of something that like brought it together. Like we have in common. Yeah, what we have in common, and like what we've been creating, and what we have been creating is art. And now it sounds like a very cool collective. It is. Yeah. It's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> Has like the project inspired you in any way? Yeah, when we got to share our experiences, mm. it has inspired me. We got to learn a lot of things from there, like the whole thing about time, mm. that you just have to, you have to plan your life well because you live it once and then you have to, yeah, you don't have like, limited time. It made me, not only inspired me to like want to do more writing and more creative things, but to learn more about things from all over the world and like the way different people live and being able to connect with people who are like around the same age as us, who are living like in completely different places. I'm really excited to see the final product that we make. I'm also so excited. I wonder how it's going to look like when they piece it together. Yeah, literally, like <laughs> how we're going to edit it and how we're going to make it, like the voiceovers that we're going to make and how we're going to film mm. ourselves talking about the poem. Would you do this again, like if there was another opportunity? I would, I would, because I've learned a lot and I've had fun and getting to know people from the other side of the world has really been an interesting experience. Yeah, it really has. It's made me want to work harder to like get to know people from all over the world and get to know how they live life. I wish this should go on and go on and go on because we're learning a lot and I can't wait also to share these ideas to my friends here in Malawi. And since we started our journey with our colleagues in Wales, it's not a one-off journey, but it's a, a long-term partnership so that we can cement this um, relationship forever. <laughs> Thank you.